So all of the all of this that you mentioned is it relevant just to coaches? Um, no, it's a holistic approach. So the organizations are crucial to develop everything to prepare the environment in order uh, you know athletes to thrive. Coaches are crucial to help the athletes and the parents to to be the best version they can. So the environment and everything around the athletes. Bit. But what happens if you take away the athletes and the parents? There's no badminton anymore. There's no sport because the athletes will be and always will be the key of any sport, anything because it's all about them and it's all about the development. So practically the the clients of any sport organization, the first are the members who are the athletes, and then of course their environment and the parents. One of the most misunderstood concepts, in my opinion, in the current state of badminton is how how much parents are important, how much the environment of the athlete is important. There are quite a lot of studies then in that area, but. Um, the the aim is to support all of those, f- you know, three and further four stakeholder groups, as we call them, meaning all of those areas that it's extremely important the badminton itself to become very, very successful. Okay, so right now all the things that you discussed, uh, the profiling, the programs, how can this be used by an athlete, and why would an athlete want to use this? and not the usual approach of going to an actual club and learning from an actual coach a live coach or a live snc session live psychology session everything in person why would he not go for that approach and what could he benefit from the badminton approach are those two different first it, it depends so probably i'll say it like that um now the first part is no one can substitute the physical interaction of coach. We are a physical sport, we're not chess, for example, yeah. where we can play chess against anybody, get a remote session is almost uh, irrelevant if you're physically there or not. It's a physical sport. It's you need the interaction of the coach, you need the group, you need everything else. So I would always encourage that. And badminton, I don't think it will ever substitute that. The points that we can substitute to the athlete that sometimes might be even a challenge with the current coach is something like you know you need an extra support especially on a preparing your environment you have challenges the personal challenge you don't know how to interact with the environment you, the the interaction and relation between outlet parent coach is a very specific deep topic that we can discuss in a lot of support extra in some countries the environment is very supportive when the athletes do a lot on their own and the owner of of the athlete the owner of the development is the athlete and his environment, which is not in all the systems in all the country. In that in that countries, we can support a lot because that means is we can give a different opinion. We can support the athlete, and the athlete will communicate that information to his current coaches. Not even one coach, but he would be part of multiple setups, and he would find how to use that information. Now, in another systems, where the coach is the holder of the athletes. Uh, you know, development or even the so future. So the coaches are driving the, the moment. Coach, the yeah. coaches are driving. That will not be even recommended to some extent because it can create conflict between the athlete and the coach, which we definitely don't want. Those systems we aim to support preliminarily the coaches, helping them understand how to support the athletes better. And in general, that's the overview that we want to go, how to support the coaches and then the athletes. But we understand the challenges of the different system and therefore if we want to do it better for the athletes and then the coaches and then the organization, we need to be able to support everybody according to their own journey. And there will be areas that will say, we can't support that athlete because we'll create even higher level of a conflict for him and the coach. Or we'll say, yes, we could. And according to their personal situation, we'll be able to help them move forward. The outcome for me is coaching the coaches first, if we're talking about specifically athletes and coach development, and then coaching the organization, the coaches and the athletes, when we talk about organization all the way down to the athletes' development. Okay. And in this way, if we... If and, and we sorry, I should just to add on that one. I think it's really my personal drive is actually really much helping the parents. Um, I'm a parent, and I'm a parent of a tree, and it's, it's groundbreaking when you know that you actually could have a massive level of support, but you don't have a clue how to. So if I'm a parent and I'm lost, how do I interfere? How do I get to know how to help, right? Because the parent can only do so much. And in many countries, the parents of some of the best, most talented kids are not badminton coaches or players or something like that, because that's an illusion. It's very few 
that actually are coaches because there are very few coaches at the top level anyway, right? So the statistically, purely statistically looking, a lot of the future talents are not coming from the best kids. They're coming from parents who've never been good enough in the sport or even been sporty parents, right? So to help those, help them, help their children who can interfere in the setup and the organization is also part of the challenge. Okay, okay. So let's consider all this and let's consider one situation here. Now, suppose I am an athlete, uh, for example, I am someone who does not have access to top coaching, yep. uh, does not have access to top SNC knowledge, does not have access to any of this. Yeah. Can badminton, uh, if I want to grow as a player, yeah. can badminton aid me? Can it, can it help my development? Can y yes, to, a, to an extent. Again, it depends where you are. So I give an example. And why I say why to an extent and why it depends where you are. So let's imagine that you're in India, right? Indian setup and academy is a very versatile. It's actually quite fascinating to see it from outside and to see how much they've grown and developed and everything else. I would say probably if you're in India set up and you're still responsible where the coaches are coming in and they are interfering with you, but the parents are very big part of that responsibility. Parents, in my opinion at the moment, and all the research showing it, is they're a very significant driver behind the athlete success in a country yeah. like India. And if this is the case, then helping the athlete and the parents is quite more possible because they will be the driver, they're the owner of the athlete's development, right? In the moment when you move to a country where the coach is completely yeah. the owner, that might not be that welcome to help the athlete separately from a group of the coach because that will not make any sense for the coach. It will be actually bringing conflict on the table. In that single situation, that won't be advisable. In, this, in the situation where we can help separately on the topics, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, but this is not, uh, this is not exactly what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about here is yeah. if suppose let's say you want to improve the level of performance in badminton yeah and you want to improve it worldwide one of the things that you need that is necessary for for this is to improve the average level of performance around the world yeah now there are there are recreational players there are players who play semi professionally of and course. then there are are your high end professional players who are just doing that as uh, as their career. Yeah. Now, if you look at this recreational to semi-professional group, this group who is trying to continuously learn and become better, yeah. uh, who are not going to be a part of any big national setup ever, but they want to improve their badminton, uh, level of badminton, compete in whatever tournaments they compete, can badminton be relevant because this is a major chunk of population? Yeah, so simple answer, yes, because they're the owner of their own athletes yeah. development. So the, if, we, if we simply split them in two parts, the athletes who are the owner, no matter the level, then we can definitely help them. The athletes who are part of a setup where the coach or the organization is the owner, then we can help, but it will be limited because we'll have to interfere on a higher level. If that so you sense. would help the coaches? You will help the coaches because... And, and, even that my sounds that we could help, I would say no, because that will only make it worse in a specific situation. It won't make sense to do that. But in the set in the setup that you gave an example, yes, because they're the owner of their own athletes development. And when I say athletes development, I'm looking at this it could be a lot of fun, but they're still badminton athletes. Yeah. They're not for me badminton players only, if that makes sense. I'm seeing them everybody, no matter how much or how much little kid to a professional one all of them, all of us, could be actually badminton athletes. So I'm putting athleticism into the badminton as well, but I'm saying badminton is first. We're not athletes badminton, you know, for badminton. We are, we're not, uh, we want to put the badminton first in order to use everything else. So that means the technical, tactical abilities, everything that we do on court will be the preliminary driver to how we approach everything else. Because otherwise, if we do it the opposite, we can become extraordinarily good in everything else, but we might not become better badminton. You know, we can become greater athletes, but not badminton players. So that combination between both of them also has to have a balance. Okay. And you talked about a systematic approach throughout this podcast. Yes. Has this systematic approach, you, you said that you have used this in the past. Has it, what, what are the results of this? Um, so that's quite interesting. So on the scale of, 
you know, starting with the you know beginners, uh, minute and technical as the system in Denmark. I've had an opportunity. So, what is minute and technical? Is it kids? So the the minute and technical system was developed by uh, Morten Bjorn and Kasper Sjöresen in Denmark many years ago. It has an um, uh, inheritance of a lot of other systems. I remember at the time I was I had the opportunity to work with Morten Bjorn in a VBK where he went for six months in China to acknowledge their development there and then brought a lot of ideas and knowledge. And then the first interaction, many many younger, very young kids development sessions will start forming and then Morton and Casper succeeded to build up the first version then continue interacting. Uh, later on I had the opportunity with, to bring Morton in Germany and with him to form something which we call the more in Minute and Plus and Technica Plus. Practically it has not a lot to do with Minute and Technica in the Danish version but it has a lot of, to, I wanted to keep the name of acknowledging what Morton yeah. was actually developing uh, and unfortunately he passed away and he was one of my mentors personally at the time. So for me, it was important to acknowledge that and move it forward. That's why I kept the name. Uh, the, re the reality is when you start looking at the younger development, the younger children development, all the way to the top, you have different problems. You have different development pathway that you have to solve. When we look at the beginners, we're looking how to move the beginners in a very clear foundation with a lot of fun and always keep the fun on the top but it becomes more performance and injury when we start going to the performance and injury pathway and as well as athletes development when you go to the athletes development even for fun amateurs athletes development pathway but at the end they're all athletes and they're all badminton athletes okay that makes sense. so in this system then from minute and technica how does the foundational path go forward so what are, what are the next steps and what is the highest step so in general we're talking about moving from a very early younger beginners which we call minute and plus then it goes to the next level technica plus technica plus is still there all having the same type of problems and then further when they reach the foundation level they become kind of complete badminton athletes to some extent but still badminton and athletes comes afterwards then they have a performance pathway and they have an amateur pathway. Practically in badminton, the first part we're going to take a look of is the performance pathway after the foundation level. So you will go from foundational to the advanced to the elite. Each of those is broken in kind of a three sub levels where there are a lot of aspects inside of each one of them. But there is also a mature pathway with a lot of action, extra activities, which we have to incorporate in the future. And it's not yet in the roadmap of the current badminton system, but it has to come up because it's very important for the organizational and the structural development and business development for any organization in the near future. Okay. And this system that you have used, how are there any players who are already playing who have been a part of such a system? So when I, uh, so when I graduated in Denmark, I started using the approach of the current systematic development. I was already clear that it is in you know since day one. So I've had an opportunity to work with the Danish players or all my development as a sport coach within SPA was part of that and then I had the opportunity to move to Germany where I, was, I became a, a head of elite coaching within the Hamburg setup and that, that's a national German youth center. Uh, all of the players that I currently had at that setup they were applied the same system. Later on when I moved to Kaiserslautern all of the players that was there was also moved further but in Kaiserslautern with the association that is responsible for the national center we also had an opportunity to start implementing that within the local setup, within the clubs. So kind of not just looking at specific elite players that you have access to, but integrating that within the club. This is the first major probably try to implement a system like this into a much bigger scale compared to just a local environment that you're responsible for. And it's still ongoing where I'm completely part, not, not, not anymore part of and it's going to, on its own journey. How much is successful or not is another question to judge it. The players that we've had at, for example, Kaisla to have become European champions in the 19, so there's a lot of, or been part of the national team of Germany becoming European champions in the 19. Some of the players in the further development or younger development in Hamburg are one of the most successful senior players in, the, in Germany. How much the system has been part of their part, you know, development is very hard to say because yeah. it's not just one is not they haven't been only in that system for the whole time they have come into a system then go off to the system they've continued into different centers and move forward but that system has shaped them to some extent more or less okay and at the top international so, so sorry just a second one of the things that i'm trying to ask here is about you told me when we were going for the all england bit yep. that 14 of your players were competing in the entire yep. draw so we we can say that 
that here. But let's not yeah. say that it's Brink, just you a system. Get a brink one single specific player because if I no, no. Let's not them, let's not talk yeah. about names. Yeah. Just but let's just mention that fourteen of those of my past players have been moved. Along. Have played yeah. here, and I you can say that you wo- It's not just the system. Yeah. But they've have been a part of the system in the past. Yeah, so we we can put n- a lot bigger numbers if we are talking about the youth and everything else. It's, yeah. it's much more trickier to to say when you're looking the whole systematic development is. If you look at one player, how much that system has shaped that person to that one. So for example, if I compare Emma Moshinsky, who spent with me five years, it's very different compared to if I send somebody like Yvonne Lee, where it's you know when I moved to Hamburg, Yvonne was just in the beginning and she became nine months afterwards European champion so can I say that this was done by the system definitely not is there anything level that it has interacted with her yes to some extent but how much this compared to that is not really measurable okay, that okay let's not let's not talk about let's just keep the examples yeah. have, uh, mentioned. so okay I have another question for you here yeah. now if you add a systematic approach to badminton to, to teaching everything to yep. teaching technique tactics all the badminton specific things all the athlete specific things all the organization specific things uh for the first two the badminton specific athlete specific things if you teach that uh systematically does that not take away the fun from badminton the individual nature of the sport uh and how 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 do you see that so, so the, the, the really interesting question and I think it's crucial to understand it. The, when we talk about system, we're talking about what are we teaching and when are we teaching that, right? So it's again like a navigation that you're doing it. But just imagine like in navigation, you're driving in the car. You can be very serious at driving in the car, right? You can have a lot of fun driving in the car. Yeah. That has nothing to do where the car goes through and yeah. what is outside of the environment because the environment inside of the car is your training environment, is what you bring on the table. So if I'm really funny driver and I'm very relaxed and outside is rainy and stormy I will still have a lot of fun in the car yeah. so that has literally about how to bring that journey along because we're on a journey and we bring the journeys of the players